Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial on Elasticsearch. In this tutorial, we will have a brief overview of one of the market's leading search engine that is Elasticsearch. Before learning the Elasticsearch engine, we need to know what is search engine and what is the purpose of it. As we know, the databases are good at the database activities but not good when it comes to the searching. On the other hand, the search engines are excellent for the search functionalities. Search engines are good at finding the documents that contains specific terms as well as the phrases. Search engines are also good at scoring and sorting the documents to the relevance, of course, which is a critical part of the search engine. The search engines also perform grouping, filtering, and the aggregation of the data. If you see at the search engine, it came from the information retrieval field, but it is getting used more and more for the analytical purposes. So, what is Elasticsearch? Elasticsearch is an open source search engine that has analytics and full text search capabilities. Elasticsearch is written using Java language and built on the Apache Lucene. Why Elasticsearch is so famous? The reason is it is easy to use and highly scalable compared to other search engines in the market. Due to its distributed nature, we can easily make it scalable and search against the millions or billions of the records in a fraction of a second. Do you know which companies are using Elasticsearch currently? Don't be get surprised if I mention Facebook, Netflix, Adobe, Stack Exchange, LinkedIn, OpenStack, Accenture, Quora, Wikimedia and many more. Now, we know the present of the Elasticsearch. Would you like to know more about how the Elasticsearch born? It starts with the year 1999 when platform Lucene came out. After its development, Lucene was added to Apache Foundation in 2001 and it became a top level project in 2005. Lucene also included many projects such as Apache, Mahout as well as HDFS. The nature of Lucene helped all search engines to index the data from the internet and retrieve data for the fuzzy matching. Of course, around the same time something interesting also happened. And that is nothing but the, the compass was introduced in 2004, which is also based on the Lucene, but it is mainly created for scalable purposes. This is the where the Elasticsearch born, which is based on the, the Apache Lucene and the Java technology, as well as contains the features of the compass. And this started around the year 2010. Now we know the history of the Elasticsearch. Let's deep dive a little bit. Elasticsearch is more commonly used to add search functionality. Now, of course, we know that, but this functionality can be added to your a blog, or which is a very simple application, or a complex enterprise application. Using this search functionality, users can search for data of the product, like product or person or any kind of documents, and do many more things. In short, users can search for anything they want using Elasticsearch. We can build a complex search functionality using Elasticsearch similar to Google or the other search engine kind of Bing, which includes functionalities such as auto-completion, correcting the typos, highlighting the matches, and even the performing the fuzzy matching. Now let's consider the example. Suppose user is searching a product on an e-commerce website such as 
Amazon, eBay or Flipkart or you can use Alibaba or Truecar. Apart from researching using the full text, we need to consider the several factors while displaying the results on the user screen. If a product has a rating, then we may need to put that product at the top level in the search results. We also need to give a better user experience by providing filters on price, color, size, or you can use a brand as well. We might need to add the functionality of sorting. If you have noticed, this sorting functionality gives a more control to user to show the best match based on the price or distance, or it could be just a relevant match. So we need to also give sorting features to the users. In short, Elasticsearch can do all these things to build a powerful search functionality. Apart from the full text search, we can query structured data as well, such as numbers, date fields, or any other kind of fields, and perform aggregation on that. This will help you for performing analytics on the data set. Using these aggregate functions on a query, we can prepare the data to represent in the form of various kinds of charts. And these charts are not limited to pie chart, line chart, or graph chart. You can create any kind of charts using that data set. If you ask me, is the Elasticsearch business intelligence tool? And the answer is no, definitely not. It is not a business intelligence tool, but you can still achieve much with the Elasticsearch based on the data which is stored in the Elasticsearch and the functionalities which comes with the Elasticsearch as well. The best example of it is a system monitoring and log analysis. In any enterprise application, it is very critical to monitor the systems for better performance as well as for the better user experience. For that, system matrix and the logs analysis of these will help administrator to monitor and take appropriate action. We can set alerts, keep the track of errors, we can manage the memory and also show the information in the nice user-friendly charts that can be easily understood by the users with the less expertise. What I've just discussed is nothing but the application performance management, that is APM. It is a part of Elasticsearch. We will learn what is Elastic Stack in detail in our next tutorial. Now we know a little bit about the Elasticsearch. Let's understand with the example and what it can perform. We can send the data to the Elasticsearch engine. In Elasticsearch term, it's called events. For example, the stock data from any stock exchange, we can send to the Elasticsearch data and determine which stock outperform for the given day. Similarly, we can send the product data to the Elasticsearch engine and determine which product category has highest sale for the given time frame. The Elasticsearch handles endless business use cases. To achieve it, we can use aggregation. Of course, you might know that term from your relational database experience. Elasticsearch is also good at the analytics. Not only that, but we can also use a machine learning along with the Elasticsearch to forecast the cells using historical data. So here the magic comes. As we know, the machine learning is the future and Elasticsearch supports that. So that means Elasticsearch has a good future too. When we determine or when we forecast anything which ultimately useful for the various things, for example, capacity management, as in that you have a customer service information which includes the number of calls made for a given period. And using Elasticsearch along with the machine learning, 
you can determine how many customer agents are required so that you can plan your resources accordingly in some seasons like the christmas time or thanksgiving or the, during the diwali time you might need to add the more number of resources that's a, a general analysis but there will be a fluctuations throughout the year which are very hard to determine but the elastic search with the machine learning will definitely add the value by providing the proper forecast on the other hand for managing infrastructure in any enterprise application you may need to determine when to add additional resources such as servers disk space or memory this can be easily achieved with the elastic search with the machine learning another best example of the machine learning with elastic search is anomaly detection suppose you have an amazing travel blog and normally 50000 visitors visit your blog every day suddenly one day you notice only 100 users visited on that given day so something is wrong happened right so to monitor such thing you have to check every minute throughout the day which is more tedious work and then take action to make sure nothing problematic is going on in this case we can implement machine learning to learn the patterns and detect the anomalies in the system and then implement deep learning to take action also even we can set alerts like messages on your cell phone or your messenger or even you can send emails also based on those events now i assume that you got some idea about elastic search would you like to know how elastic search work i assume your answer is yes so let's proceed in the elastic search information or the data is stored as a document how does the document look like here is a sample example in this screen we can see there are some labels like first name last name and country and it has corresponding values like bob shaw and us respectively have you seen something like this before of course you have this is nothing but the a json object So as we say it is a json object which holds the fields and values combination we are assuming this is the json object for person and we need to send this json object to the elastic search engine and it will be stored as a document now we got how the data is stored in the elastic search but how it is retrieved or search for searching the records using elastic search we need to use rest apis don't worry about these terms we will use very simplified versions of the rest apis no need to learn much about the rest apis but it will be good to have some knowledge about the rest api as well as the json in the next lecture we'll explore more about this elastic search with the help of elastic stack